Hello and welcome to another video around the Identity Manager. In this very short video series, we will just have a look at Identity Manager 9.2 and all the new features and enhancements implemented in that specific version. This is the YouTube video series. You can watch it on YouTube. That should be the place where you see that here. But it is also possible just to go through the same content with a certification at the end. That means if you are interested to get a certificate just for continuous education on the Identity Manager, this can be done from our learning management system. Therefore, you have to go to litmos.quest.com and from there you can then just run through that specific training. This content is of course not available for everybody, but for all the people with an account within one identity, this is of course an option. Additionally to that, it is good to know that uh, the Identity Manager update video stuff is typically something for professional Identity Manager users or consultants. It is a little bit too much if you are just interested to learn what the Identity Manager is. Therefore, we have a couple of basic courses which fits much better to this need. With that, have fun and follow me now to the screen and I will exactly show you what is new in Identity Manager 9.2 and what was enhanced. Okay, first let's talk about the prerequisites necessary for the Identity Manager. And if we want to talk about that, the first thing is the supported SQL Server versions. The first thing there is implemented since version 9.1 and we talk about the SQL Server 2022 latest CU that is supported. And additionally, since 9.1 as well, the Emerson RDS for Microsoft SQL Server, which is supported as well. One thing to know, if you just look at the Emerson RDS for Microsoft SQL Server, then you should know that the permission model gets not supported. That means you will not have the fine granular permissions from RDS. Another limit, if you will just talk about the RDS server, it is that you have to use the Quantum Migrator CMD. This is the command line migrator just to install the Identity Manager. Any GUI tools will not work together with that. That might happen then in a future version. And now let's talk about discontinued and deprecated features. Discontinued features are features will be removed in one of the next Identity Manager versions. Typically, this will be the next version. However, web designer and web designer based web applications are part of the discontinued features. They are shipped with 9.2 this time, but they will be removed in the next feature release. The table person password history will be removed. That table is not necessary then any longer. And there are some scripts also obsolete and will be removed in the next Identity Manager version. Additionally to that, from the job service perspective, we had some features in the past just to transport the job information from one job service to another. There was an FTP job gate that was sending files around using the FTP protocol just to transport jobs from the database to a job server or from one location to another. The same was done with an HTTP job gate server and we had at the end a file job gate server that was directly creating files somewhere in a file location. All of that can in the meantime be completely replaced by using the application server. With that, all of these slow file transfers are not necessary any longer. And so we remove that. One other reason is that the last customer that was using that feature in the meantime as well is using the application server. With that, the number of plugins for job services gets simplified and hopefully as well easier to use. Now let's talk about the deprecated features, of course. Deprecated features are features with end of life. That means they was removed with the 9.2 release of the Identity Manager. You can see left hand side a couple of scripts, just not any longer in the database. And on the right hand side, a number of configuration parameters as well not necessary any longer. In these cases, typically the functionality is in the meantime completely differently solved with that the data scripts and of course the configuration parameters are not necessary anymore. 
for all the people just using them somewhere in the system, for example in customized scripts or other customizations, this is now the time just to update these scripts and ensure that the new standard will be used in difference to the old configuration that is not used any longer. If you need them for whatever else reason, which is possible, for example, from the configuration parameter side, then please create custom configuration parameter to do that. And of course, from a script perspective, you always can just copy the old scripts and paste them into your system as a CCC option. That means at the end as a custom script. Typically, we just suggest to use the new functionality in difference to the old stuff. Since ever, there is a big debate about terms in the Identity Manager and how to name objects. This is especially because we want to make it as easy as possible for you to understand what we are talking about. One of the longest discussions there is the discussion around the person object. Person objects are objects stored in table person in the identity manager and of course they represent at the end humans or machine identities. They were named employees in the past and that was misleading a lot because employees could be as well subcontractors or machine identities or something other else because of that. Since version 9.2, and I'm very proud of it, are now named identities. And as you easily can see as well on the screen, there are pseudo employees as well renamed to virtual identities. So that identities now covers everything which is an identity. The answer why that was not renamed a little bit earlier is that employees are one of the main objects at all. And to rename all of these things, that means to find the right discipline name for everything, does have as well effect on the multi-language table. That means all the translations happen to other languages. If you just created the one or the other translation customly based on employees, it is now time to recreate these translations, especially because there are no employees in the system at all as a basic template. You have now to use the term identities. Additionally to these renamings, there were some other renamings as well. Request templates, for example, are now named product bundles. That makes a little bit more sense for the IT shop, of course. And help test tickets are now tickets. So help test calls was the old name, tickets are the new name. This is, of course, something that is correct as well. There is another renaming that is language culture to language or language codes, but of course I'm very sure nearly nobody of us will have seen these translations in the past. With these renamings we are much better to understand and I hope you will have fun with that renaming now.